flies are unique because his flies are productive. Landon has supernatural abilities to see fish in the water. I'm going to tell you about three tips that I use whenever I try to find water I think trout are holding in. I was told early on landing the trout in my life is a one-time chance. I've since discovered it can become a lifetime of chances. When you see that monster and your nerves begin to rattle, your hands begin to shake, because you know this is your shot. Don't blow it, stay calm. Make the right cast. And boom! Fish on. People often ask me what I consider to be a trophy trout. Trophy trout to me can be three things. First thing it can be size, because size does matter. You catch a 12 pound brown, which is a trout of a lifetime, that can be a trophy. A wild trout that you catch that's native to the waters you're fishing, or comes from a natural reproduction, that can be a trophy. And also what you make of it. If you're fishing a beaver pond and you're catching eight inch fish all day and you happen to catch a 15 inch brookie, that's a trophy. You're fishing all day and the weather's tough, conditions are tough, fishing's tough, you want to catch one fish and you do, that's a trophy. So size does matter, but a trophy is what you make of it. One of the main concepts I use for sighting trout is what I refer to as a viewing lane. This is a section of water that you can clearly see into that at times can span all the way across river or only five to eight feet in front of you. It can be positioned at an upstream, downstream angle, or directly in front of you like we have right now. A viewing lane is your area of water that you can see into and allows you to scan the water looking for that trout of a lifetime. The key to using a viewing lane is being able to look into it with unfocused eyes, trying to detect movement, silhouettes or shadows, or coloration of the trout. It's important to be able to scan the water or the viewing lane that you're looking into at your walking speed. You want to be able to move up river, cover water quickly, that way you can cover a larger range of the water that you're trying to find the fish. Fish will spook even before you detect the trout, so it's important that you scan the water at a thorough speed. That way if the fish does spook, you can follow it until it stops, starts to feed again, then you'll have a shot of that fish you want to look for. Right in front of us we have an example of a viewing lane. If you look upstream at an angle, we have glare on the water. I can't see in past the water's surface. So I'm going to move my eyes down to directly in front of me where I have an open viewing lane that I can literally see almost all the way across stream. This viewing lane is going to be my tool for finding that trout of a lifetime.
you know, when fish are not rising, my favorite way to fish is hopper, and there's the first component right there, BC hopper, very buoyant, high floating hopper. And then I'm gonna drop the copper john off the, off the bend of the hook, tied to the clinch knot, and usually around three feet, depending on the water depth. So we're gonna put the copper off the bend of the hopper, and then we're gonna drop a pattern that represents the predominant insect activity that's going on right now. And we're in early September now, and the predominant insect uh, that's ha gonna be hatching today will be a bluing doll of a betis. So I'm gonna put a little flashback betis emerger off the copper, and uh, I think we'll be in business. Sweet. Yeah. <laughs> 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 